Hey y'all, I am an anarchist, and this is my concept of what hierarchy is. This is based somewhat on texts I've read on the topic, although I haven't found any that I quite agree with yet. It is mainly lived experience in talking with others that brought me to it. I am autistic, trans, and white. Being white limits my ability to speak on some aspects of hierarchy, and that will be touched on more later. I was diagnosed as autistic early on in my life. If your reaction to me saying that I was diagnosed as autistic was to put more credibility towards me being autistic, well, this video is a direct fuck you to you. This is relevant because I was placed in special education early, and that heavily shaped my conception of authority and hierarchy. The special education system very clearly showed me many different tactics of control by one person after another. It is what made me an anarchist, and did so relatively quickly. Part of the reason for this is because I could not remember who these people were. It was a new person every day with agency over my body, maintaining it in a new way with the same goal and outcome. Sometimes it was with violence and threats of violence. I was dragged by my arm down the hallway without understanding why, too many times to count. Some promised rewards, so that if I did something that hurt but would make me appear more normal, I would get candy. Something so many overlook in their conception of hierarchy. On top of that, there were those that would restrict my knowledge of other options. And with that, my access to the world around me. I did not know I was autistic until years later, when they finally allowed me to know. In that time, I could have done research myself to find community, who would show me things I didn't even know were possibilities. I did not realize I was trans, because I dismissed it as being an impossibility for the far future. I did not know transition was even possible, that there was a community for trans people as well. Hierarchy is not just guns and police. It is people not wearing masks. It is building places without ramp access. It is people deciding they don't care about alt text on images. Hierarchy is maintained through presenting a specific subset of possible decisions. This curation is hierarchy. Hierarchy is a method of processing information. It does not matter how they get it on my plate. It is the creation of the self-serving subset that is the issue. Am I denied help today, or am I denied agency? Is the excuse they pity my existence, pretend it's not there, or want to remove it entirely? I'm repeating myself, though. Alright, let's do a brief overview before getting into specifics. First, we were vague with defining hierarchy. I believe it is when one social class defines itself in another social class, that it then controls through bureaucracy. I mean bureaucracy the social system here, not just the act of having paperwork or what have you. So, when it comes to hierarchy, members of social classes interact with each other not as individuals, but as abstracted representations of that class. Under capitalism, I get paid wages and do labor. The specific capitalist could be switched out every day for a year, and the relationship would be the same. Yet, we are still able to interact. They might not know my name, but they can read the wage to send out. That is what I mean by system of processing information. The package of wages itself, and by social classes defining itself and then another one, well, capitalists choose to be capitalists, workers don't choose to be workers. What a worker is, is decided by those paying the wages. Hierarchy being a method of processing information also leads to some really important statements. First, it is not simply a psychological thing. It can exist whether or not someone realizes it. I often did not realize people were holding information from me, and many would deny that they were doing anything wrong. I went years without knowing weighted blankets exist, but holy shit, they help a ton. If you're autistic, I recommend trying it. On top of that, it is not a simple relation. 
Hierarchy involves many different classes, with many different sets of often conflicting information and ideas to work through. You can oppress others while being oppressed yourself. This does not mean oppression goes both ways, though. There is no reverse racism. I will also make a little attempt to convince you hierarchy is negative. If you are watching stuff made by me, I'm going to assume that is a given. So, main points. Intro was me explaining that I am indeed valid. I just got done explaining everything in enough detail that I can hopefully get into the specifics of each piece without losing you. And right after this, I will explain a social class defining itself and another one in more detail. Then bureaucracy. And then I will follow up with a breakdown of a system of hierarchy. So, groups defining themselves. A fundamental aspect of this is the idea of a normal, of a default. We have the word holistic, meaning not autistic, but how many people have even heard of this? There is the often told joke of there being two genders, man and political. Normal can't exist in a vacuum. Normal is a relation to something, not a thing in and of itself. It is specifically a relation to the quality sometimes called political. The quality of political is just something we give to a class that is managed by another. Trans people are considered political because of the debate between cis people over whether we should be allowed in sports. As one example, cis people in sports is considered normal because it is cis people deciding who should be in sports. Another way to describe this use of political is dehumanized. These controlled classes are defined around something. There's a diagnosis for being autistic. There's a diagnosis for being trans. The capitalists define the duties of a laborer and what they must be in order to eat. White people looked at a bunch of land that defined it as a continent and then arbitrarily grouped people up. I mean, look at Africa. Half of those borders are straight lines. There is no diagnosis for cis. In fact, it was trans people who came up with that word. Cis people didn't even want a label other than normal. It was trans people who got a label. It sure as hell isn't trans people who define the diagnostic criteria. Or the conditions under which we are allowed to transition. This criteria is empty, though. Not only is it arbitrary, it often changes from place to place and over time. It even changes from person to person. One therapist may be willing to diagnose you as trans so you can get hormones. Another may fuck you over for shits and giggles. It is specific for the sake of being specific. Action on us comes from control. Control comes from measurement. The more you measure, the more surface area you must have to measure from. And so the more strict and specific definitions must be. That is where bureaucracy comes in. But we have to finish this first. The best way I've seen it put is that we are a ball used in games between groups of these normal people. The control is used to outmaneuver each other. Or just to score as many points as possible. The capitalists often don't think of the workers at all when fighting each other. So, the most important part is the lack of control over ourselves. The identity is just an excuse for the control. That is why so-called normal people often reject new identities, like that of cis. It might lead to their control being scrutinized. When I say a group defining itself, I don't necessarily mean a group finding shared inherent factors about themselves. Irish people weren't always considered white, even though their skin is pretty light. Instead, it is a social class, a relation to each other based around shared power. It is a team. White is whatever it needs to be in order to create an alliance to grow power. No matter what it ties itself to, that is all it is. I'm white myself. I didn't choose to be a part of this alliance. Existing in these systems isn't always entirely voluntary. I was born in the US, and that is a part of the process of colonialism. Here is something I relate it to. Some children are born to rich parents that can afford better dental care. Even if they become a communist later in life, their teeth will stay with them. I've read books on the topic, but I will never really know what racism is like to experience, even as I attempt to fight it. So, to sum up my point here, 
Normal means in control. Political means controlled. These groups are strictly controlled and defined, but the basis of that is meaningless. To control something, you must strictly outline what it is, so you can outline the actions to perform on it. This is done so it can be used as Pokemon in this gigantic fucking battle we are stuck in. This normal is an alliance based on control. Normal is who processes information, and political is whose information is processed. The next section is a deeper dive into how these social classes interact. I want to say first, though, obviously, everything is political. Even the so-called normal class, the very idea of it not being political, is part of the hierarchy. Political is only dehumanizing when there is the concept of normal, after all. We obviously don't need to get rid of all the people that happen to fall into that normal, but the alliance must be destroyed. So bureaucracy, how a social class manages another social class. Stuff like a diagnosis for an identity are good examples of this, but I think the student-teacher relation is the best. It is as distilled as hierarchy can get at this point. By this, I do not mean impact, I mean openness. So, as I said in the start, hierarchy is about information. This is where it comes into play. A teacher can't peer into the head of a student. The best they can do is set up some points of measurement, create a version of an ideal student, and compare the real student to the ideal student. The set of measurement points are questions on an exam or homework. The ideal student is the answer key. The teacher goes through the assignment piece by piece and determines whether the student is close enough to this ideal or not, stripping all other information and context. How fast did the student complete the homework? Did they memorize or derive? How did they visualize it? How much did they learn? All that information is thrown out and replaced with a percentage. Oh look, I got 90% of an ideal student. Cool. Then it goes through another layer. The teacher throws out what I got on any individual assignment, how my grades changed over time, and what topics of the assignments were, and other related information to get a grade for the class. Then we throw out information on what teacher did that, and even what subjects I learned about to get the grade point average. In the other direction, we have some asshole at a college admissions department saying, we don't want anyone below a 2.0 GPA to get admitted to this college. And with that, they make decisions about millions of students. That's so much as knowing their name. They split up the social class and interact with it in chunks based on this measurement of how close to the ideal they are. 90% gets this, 80% gets this, 70% gets this, and so on. This is a credit score. This is wages. This is shit like IQ. And as a hint for the end of this video, this is what democracy does too. There are different approaches to problems and pattern recognition, and humans make mistakes. The methods we use to solve problems are based on many things. Neurodivergence and culture are high up among them. Among us, even. If you divide labor differently, then you will have different problems to solve, and thus learn different methods of solving problems. Ability is not some fluid we can throw equally in any direction as required. When the methods someone uses first do not work, they are less likely to get the problem right. Every retry is a chance to make a mistake, and not all problems are solved equally as well, or at all by the same methods of problem solving. There is often no way of knowing what method will solve a problem until you try. I mean, look at mathematics. I cannot even tell in a generalized way whether a computer program will end. Sometimes you just have to run it and see. This means the ideal student has a specific way it is assumed to attempt to solve problems. As generalization is impossible and scores decreased on mistakes, the ideal student has a culture. There is no unbiased measurement of ability. The class that measures it and their experiences are canonized as normal or correct in the act of this measurement. Interacting with someone based on this measurement is inherently placing value on it. Placing value with this measurement is placing value on people based on how close they are to the social class doing the measurement. 
I define hierarchy with this because everything everyone else uses to describe it requires this. Sure, some are less formal than others, power more spread out, but members of a social class are interacting with an ideal at the end of the day. Even if it's a million different schools banning trans people instead of the federal government, it's not like they are in an outside class defining trans people. They just don't act as one unit doing it. They distribute it throughout the alliance. Capitalism is just a bunch of small dictatorships fighting each other after all. Hierarchy can only make decisions based on information obtained this way. To change what is being done, more fine-tuned models of these ideals are required. To interact on a finer level of detail, more control is needed. To control more of something, it must have more information. To need to do something, it must punish you for not doing it after all. To have more information, it needs more measurement. It needs to know who to punish. And, we all know with more measurement, we have more problems. Often the ones they were trying to solve in the first place. Look at standardized testing. The state is trying to pry deeper to understand what can be done to make children learn more. And in doing so, they learn less. This also means hierarchy can't make anything but more hierarchy. Hierarchy is a self-replicating social system. Look at capitalism. If you don't expand your hierarchy, someone else will expand theirs and write you out of it. And before any of y'all lose hope and think we can't get rid of hierarchy, we can just not measure others based on how close they are to our idea of a group. Instead, create an idea of a group based on people who claim membership. You know, control over our own identities. So to summarize the main points with this, bureaucracy is how membership in these alliances is checked. This is done by rewarding or punishing you based on how close you are to the ideals, either of allies or specific groups they control. This obviously sucks for humanity, especially because it is self-replicating and even evolves. Anyways, this brings us to democracy. One very important part of information is what kinds of decisions you can make with it. If the only information I have access to is GPA, then GPA is the only thing I can work with. On the other hand, if I'm talking to a living, breathing person, then I get a whole lot of information. I can ask them what they want to do, why and if what I want to do could fit into that. We could use consensus mechanisms of decision making, where we could talk a problem over until we come to a solution we can all agree with, or if not, split the group. John wants to play TF2, and Sydney wants to play Among Us, and I want to play RuneScape, God help us all. We can sit down and talk about it. I can say, hey, I'm fine with TF2, I do really enjoy that game. And Sydney can say, yeah, I'm not a big fan of TF2, but I'm willing to play it if we play my game next time. I could then say, fair enough, that works for me. John could say, yeah, sorry, I'm back, I was taking a piss. And then we could go on our merry way with that decision made. Now, imagine if we used bureaucracy, created a social class of voters, and said, alright, these games are the possible options, and then stripped the context from our wants to a single number, representing the number of individuals. Two votes for TF2, one for Among Us. The only decision reached is that we get to arbitrarily overrule Sydney there because we are the majority. We don't even need to listen to her because she isn't required to reach the majority. So the decision made above with consensus would never happen in democracy because it's built around doing all you can to negate the wants of others. Vote blue no matter who. It is about stripping the context of how much someone wants something, how much it matters to them, what they are willing to do for it, and replacing it with a number. Instead of 90% being passing, we made it 50%, which isn't quite the fundamental systematic change I was looking for. Five abled people being able to overrule three disabled people on the topic of disability doesn't sound great to me. I don't care that they are in the majority and I'm the minority. And just like the school system, you aren't going to solve this by doing more bureaucracy, like trying to figure out who is disabled and giving them more vote. You don't get to say whether I'm autistic or not, or strip that down to a number. That is the hierarchy we have been talking about. It is found in the very idea of a vote. It is bureaucracy applied to wants. In my ideal world, are the wants of each person equal, or are they proportional to age? It doesn't matter. The system is based around creating one canonical capital T truth and recognizing that. 
That's the ideal we have been talking about right there. That's the input, of course the outputs are based on that as well. Only one candidate can win. Only one possible outcome can be reached. If the system is to interact with autistic people, then it will define what an autistic person is. In this case, we have the social class of the people, and well, the majority. Still splitting them up based on how close to this ideal they are. With the majority getting to determine what potential change gets made to this ideal of the people, and then they do it again. Democracy is just changing the requirements for entering into the alliance that creates these ideals. It ain't better because it's called the people's boot, or because you can say, oh, you're a part of the people, so you're a part of the controlling and the controlled class. I don't want to define whether someone else is autistic either. Fuck that, it ain't my call. There isn't and there never will be one canonical truth, just billions of different perspectives. I don't care if someone else calls themselves autistic for different reasons from me, because I sure as hell don't care what other people's conclusion is when I call myself autistic. There will never be good bureaucracy. It includes other conceptions of equality, with democracy just being one conception of equal political power. It is about using bureaucracy to create a set of canonical aspects of something to measure and set equal. It is a stripping of context. Look at the idea of equal food. Is it equal by weight, by labor required to get it, by some conception of my needs? Where do we cut the line with that? Because exercise changes what we eat. To get equal food, do we need someone sitting there measuring my exercise? Or do we just ignore this and say, fuck it, leaving its own set of problems in place? You could replace a CEO with democracy. You could just provide all the documents the CEO gets to all the workers, and vote on all the possible pay raises, buyouts, and whether to yell at that intern. And importantly, whether or not someone gets to be a part of the company. Consensus doesn't have strict exclusion slash inclusion in that way, on the other hand. I won't go into too much detail on things like consensus. I ain't the one to talk about that. Go look it up. Or find resources and comments. I'm sure people can throw links to their favorite sources there. Anyways, I stream over at Twitch. Links in the description. I could shit on democracy for an hour, but I'll save that for a rainy day. Go touch a plant, y'all. It was fun. Anyways, see you around.